Good morning! This is Word of Life and you are very welcome from wherever you're watching us from. We love you so much and we are proudly sponsored by Pretoria Hotel by Marriott Entebbe for all the tight spa a fitness center, dining and conference rooms, wedding reception and other occasions, kids play center, golf, all those things, even swimming pool, just reach there and you're going to love everything. They have good ambience, good environment. Just uh, give them a call or do your booking and reservations or numbers. Uh, 414 Comfort and luxury at its best. You're going to find it at Protea Hotel by Mario Tentebe. And today we are very honored to also have our guests back in studio they have really blessed us all this month and i'm sure that you're going to love it today as they're going to be talking about communication but in case you've missed all the uh, all the engagements that we've been having with them on word of life just go on our youtube channel that is cou family tv and you're going to find all the latest all the shows of word of life that we've had and today we are very honored to have uh, to have reverend canon dr john senyonyi and his wife uh, uh, Dr. Ruth Senyonyi, and they're going to bless us today as we're going to be talking about communication. The other time we talked about roles and responsibilities, and I'm sure <laughs> everyone who was watching us was blessed. Uh, Dr. Ruth, you're going to just give us an opening prayer, okay. and then we proceed. Let us pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for blessing us this morning and bringing us into this studio. We thank you for what you have prepared for us and for those who are listening in. We pray, Lord, that you bless them as they listen. We pray for marriages across our nation. Many people are struggling, especially with communication. We pray that you teach them how to talk to each other, how to love each other, how to take care of each other's needs. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Wow. So, Reverend, you're just going to give us quick reminders of what we talked about the other time, roles and yes. responsibilities, one or two? <clears throat> yeah, um, I think very briefly, mm. when we talked about the roles and responsibilities, we used what Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 5, when he says that wives submit to your husband. Uh, we try to clarify very well, I think, uh, the way the world understands it yeah. and the way actually of the Bible. And we need to understand that the word submit is not going to go away, but we must not equate it to the word of thoughtless obedience. Mm. That's not what it is. The Bible commands submission, never commands obedience when it comes to the wife. And so that was one side, and then we tried to see how that plays out mm. in marriage, uh, ending up with the whole issue of respect for the husband. Now, when it comes to the husband, it says, love your wife, but does not stop there. It goes further and says, as Christ loved the church. In fact, the interesting thing with these roles and responsibilities is that each one of them is related to the relationship between Jesus and the church. Uh, but of course, knowing that although it relates to Jesus and the church, there's certain it's a figure. Yeah. So don't push it to the point where you think that the, you know, you the husband have become a kind of Jesus. Mm. It's a figure that is trying to illustrate love and submission and how they play out with one another. And I think one of the most important things to understand about love, which we touched on, um, is to understand that when Jesus loved, and this is what's required of the husband, he says, as Jesus loved the church, and you have to ask yourself, how? Because Jesus loved the church and gave himself. Now, in that, we see the submission of the husband as well. But it's a loving submission where you submit your will, your interests, your desires, and you say, hey, I am here to take care of my wife, what is good for her. And uh, we went on further to try and clarify that in that submission, there is care for the wife to the point that 
you get married in October this year. Well, we want to come back in October next year or even five or 10 or 20 years later. And we are able to say, wow, the wife is much better than when she married this man. So it's important that for the husband, that care mm. is making her better. And that's exactly what it says in verse 26 of that chapter, that it delegates the husband to that care. Because it says, what did Jesus do? He cleansed, he sanctified. If you wish, he made us better. And then, of course, concludes by saying, uh, that in all that, when the wife has been cared for very well, then she can be presented to you, yourself. It's a very selfish act that actually in the caring, in the loving, it's you who will become the beneficiary mm -hmm. as the husband. But many times I think husbands don't understand this and they spend all their time focusing on submission. Well, you leave it to the wife. Do your part. You love her because even your love as in verse 21, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. So we need to keep that in mind. So that's what we discussed last time. Wow. <clears throat> so today we're talking about communication. Is it the same communication that we are having right now? <laughs> so we want to understand communication in marriage. How does it look like day-to-day uh, -day life? What is it? Okay, um, it's been said that a couple in a day spends about four minutes hmm? communicating. Four minutes? One, two, three, four, which mm -hmm. is a dangerous trend. You might communicate with everybody else through the day, but between husband and wife, research has shown that they, they spend a very little time wow. together. So we need to be very deliberate when we are talking mm. about communication, because even as we do counseling, we find that communication brings the biggest problems in a home. Mm. That when people stop communicating, when they stop doing things together, then their relationship also suffers. That's mm. why we need to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can just add this, that uh, in primary school they usually teach it as the sending and receiving of information. And I think uh, one aspect of that mm. is the fact that in communication you are not just a receiver, neither are you just a sender. Proper communication should be two-way, where you are also listening and you are also sending the communication. Now I'm using and sending rather than speaking. Mm. And sending that information, the person who sends you must make sure that what you send is received as was meant to mm. go. Because sometimes we send this communication and the other person receives it wrongly. Mm. So we identify um, what the modes of communication. There are so many ways we can communicate. Some people think we can only talk. Mm. So that mm. is verbal. But there are very many ways of communicating. Yeah. For example, the gestures that we make, mm. that's the non-verbal, the, the touch. In fact, we say, make it a habit to touch, mm. touch, touch, touch. It's, it's mm. a non-sexual touch. If I'm passing by, if I'm going to the kitchen, if I'm going to sleep, mm. if I'm sitting in the sitting room, if I'm crossing the road, it's like communication. You know, you are mm. important to me. I love you. I'm mm. holding your hand right now, which indicates something. So things like that, little things yeah. like that. Yeah. Mm. I, I think the issue with the communication, <laughs> quite often many people put it on in two categories and they stop there. When you ask people, well, how do you send in uh, how do you how do you send communication or information, <coughs> and they just say, oh, uh, there is verbal and there is non-verbal. Now the problem is that many people do not realize that the non-verbal mm -hmm. far outweighs the verbal, far outweighs the verbal. Yes, there is the verbal where the words are used like we are doing now, yeah. uh, or the tone in which you speak, that also communicates. 
actually the tone we sometimes <laughs> illustrate it when we say if you want to say I love you there are two ways there are two tones you can use you can say I love you or gently you know I love you <laughs> now yeah, those yeah, are yeah, different communication communicate yeah, yeah. differently yeah. Mm. yeah I mean one of them is simply saying well it's a duty for me to tell you I love you while the other one is saying it's really coming from my heart I do love you you know, that's, that, those are very different. Yeah. So there is the verbal, but there is also the non-verbal. I mean, today, uh, you can see my wife here uh, dressed resplendently in this dress. And anyone who is knowledgeable about that, because communication really is between two people who understand the language being used. Yeah. Now, anyone who understands church issues will immediately say, oh, that's a mother's that's union. union dress. Or you look at me and you see the collar that I'm putting on. Now many Anglicans don't know the difference between this collar and one that is a kind of window. But actually this is the law church which is what we are as Church of Uganda. We put on this round collar. Now but the moment you see someone dressed like this, what do you say? Oh Reverend yeah. how did you get that? Because I communicated non-verbally to you by the way I am dressed. So you see? dressing also <laughs> communicates a lot. Mm. Like when you see police wearing their that, uniforms, uh -huh. you just automatically know that you they know are that. police. Precisely. Yes. Yeah. Precisely. Yeah. And if you go along the Nile Street, you know that these are <laughs> prostitutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, way, <laughs> the way they are dressed. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, however... The important part about communication is that have we communicated effectively? Mm. Have we sent what we meant and have we understood what the other person has sent? So when we are sending that information, we have to be very careful. Mm. So at times mm. you send or you speak or you do something and you check it out and, and say, I meant to say this, did you understand it? So that you are mm. clear if you, if you are saying I love you and you've used the wrong tone, you can say, you know, yesterday I used the wrong tone, but really what I meant was this. this, and you clear it up in mm -hmm. the air. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, I, if I may just use the very example that we've been using, the one of Grace, and we're not saying it's the only one that communicates, but it's a very good one. Uh, when she made reference uh, to those ladies on Nile Avenue who sadly stand there waiting for men, and the way they dress, there is more exposure than cover. Mm -hmm. Now, let us say that you're visiting your boyfriend and you're dressed like one of those. And for you, you just want to look, you know, curvy mm -hmm. and, and beautiful and all that. You have sent the wrong communication to your boyfriend. True. Because you're actually st telling him, I'm available. What are you waiting for? And yet, in your mind, you may be saying, no, I am, you know, I just want you to see me as a beautiful friend you know so mm. you you can mix up communication there is need for effective communication, communication even in marriage whether it is verbal or it is non-verbal okay, you know so and then um it's also important to note that there are many differences between men and women when it comes to communication mm. they say that uh women have very many words. They use very many words when they are speaking. And the men use very few words when they are speaking. And then women love conversation. Actually, I was telling him yesterday that I, you know, I want to sit and talk about my day and bring out everything. I saw this, I did this. And I think we do that very well with our girlfriends. Mm, yeah. Now, when it comes to the men, they get bored. They can't stand that kind of, you know. <laughs> Is it true, man? We were together the whole day, yesterday. We were together the whole day. So what did I you know? You know, we were together. First of all, we were home. Then we went to Uganda Christian University for the Silver Jubilee uh, celebrations because I had to give a public lecture and, uh, and all that. But we were together. So what, what did I know? Maybe there is something that happened that you didn't see. <laughs> so it shows I don't you know. That but you see, that's the difference between men and women. Women mm. speak, they, they say three times more than yeah. men. Yeah. And um, they, they, they easily then, because of that, seek for help mm. and are able to, to, to get in touch with people mm. at, a, at a deeper level 
than men do. So those differences are important in marriage because sometimes we go into, into the relationship and think that this man will be like my girlfriend, mm. will notice that I am having struggling just by looking at me. Mm. So men sometimes cannot read deeper mm. than what has been said. Yeah. And so you get disappointed. You get into marriage and you think, oh, this is my best friend mm. and we're going to be talking through the night. And then you get there and it's like, whoa. You get disappointed. Yeah, like, like, you've been doing, like you've been doing with uh, your girlfriends, mm. right? <laughs> but you see, all of that is underlining a very, very important point. That the two people that are communicating must establish a common language. Okay? The female language is not common to me. And my male language is not common to her. <laughs> Do you True, see? Yeah. And that's exactly what we are saying. That for her, she wants to bop, 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 power it out. For me, I see. You're precise. I may make a small, exactly, <laughs> I may make a small <laughs> comment. Let's get over it. And Sometimes we don't understand. Sometimes we don't understand. Because you don't understand precise. just, but you see, what that, that's, ex, that's exactly the thing. Mm. You don't understand the same way also your spouse does Doesn't not understand. understand. When, I ex, when I explain and use a lot of words, he does not understand. No, yeah. A lot of words now, you know what, what the man's mind will do? You use a lot of words and the man breaks them up in small bits. Right? Mm-hmm. And now starts analyzing. And starts and wants to give and wants to give solutions. <clears throat> you find that he wants to give solutions yeah. to what you are saying. Hey. So you can come up with I remember yesterday we were talking about um, something that had come on a, on the counseling forum. Mm. Uh, I think what was it? It was a, a person who had had a, a problem. Yeah, a boy had yeah, hit yeah. a gun killed and, and, and killed, a killed him. Just I think you know that story. So I, I was like, oh, it's so sad, this little boy, we, we need to help him. And then he, he started coming up with solutions. And I'm like, yeah. I'm not looking for solutions. You're, you're looking I'm for just comfort. Telling. <laughs> no, I analyzed, I analyzed the situation mm. uh, like a man. I analyzed it and I said, you know, this young man, bef most people will come condemning. And indeed, what he did was wrong. We are not justifying it. But at the same time, we must try to understand this is a young, I think, senior four. Mm. Do you see how he's now, going into solution when you are in immediately? Senior four, yeah, yeah, and I'm just describing <laughs> to you the analysis. When you are in senior four, you mm. have a long future <coughs> ahead of you. Long future. Is that future going to be decided by that one event? Or is there any way of redemption for the young man? Mm. So and for I, her as a counselor, I, I, want, I was and challenging. And I want you to see the difference even just as we speak now. Mm. That mine was full of emotion as a woman. Mm. Oh, the young boy, he killed somebody. Maybe he didn't mean it. And for him immediately, he's like, so what are we going to do now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, started, I, started, I started telling her. That and I really, think there, is, as... uh, there is no, there's no <clears throat> right and wrong. Right. But we are just trying to show that women are usually emotionally packed mm. Mm. very big many words and many you know the conversation is long and yeah. men are more precise mm. and more solution focused mm. yeah. so how can we be effective like while the women are talking like with these long stories and then the the men are <laughs> precise so how do we be effective and understand each other in this communication of marriage <laughs> well it's, it brings out the part of as a woman, therefore, mm. in communication, I am going to be looking out for the man. It becomes a selfless act, not a selfish one. I'm not going to be looking out for myself. So I have to be sure that what I'm doing will work for him. And mm. what he is doing will, will work, work for, for me. So mm. we are looking at uh, helping each other rather than filling our own needs. Yeah, it's like saying that, uh, I mean, first and foremost, when you send out information, you are living with this person, you have interacted. And of course, we are at different levels, and we, are, we want to talk about levels at some point. Mm. But um, you are at different levels of communication. But let us say like now for us, we are coming to 38 years of marriage. Have I understood how she receives information? 
Do you see? I'm looking at her. Mm. And I'm saying, has she, have I, do I understand that? And therefore, don't send information. I should not send information the way that I will know. receive it mm. yeah. as a man. Or, and it's not just being a man. There are many other differences, obviously, that exist. But I need to be able to send that information in the language of what I know her to be. Secondly, you want to be sure that whatever you send is what you mean. Uh -huh. Okay? Don't send things just to be cynical. Don't send information deceptively. Send information that you mean from deep down in your heart, in your head, in everything. Let the words reflect that if you're using words. Yeah. Or whatever means of communication you're using. It's important that you are sending information that you actually mean. You know, and when the other, the other thing that is important, I send her information. Is she distracted? She may be cooking and very busy going about and I'm trying to give this hefty amount of information. So when you, what, what, what do you discuss and when? Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, let's say you are talking about finances and the person is hungry or the person is very tired. So that the environment that you are in there at that time determines what kind of communication and what kind of information you are going to be talking about. Yeah. So if you want to have a lovey-dovey, nice talk, where are you? So you create the environment. Create the environment. Yeah, or wait, you know? or wait for the moment. Mm. Wait for a moment. That's right. Let us say if you, are, if you really want to discuss finances uh, or something as serious as that, because, you know, finances are very important in a couple's life, mm. then what you would do is to say, darling, um, when you have some time, I want us to discuss. You may even say, I want us to discuss finances, or you may just leave it at discussing, and I say, I want to discuss something with you. Mm. And that person now is alerted and there will be a time when they are not too busy. If a man is reading his newspaper and you budge in to give the information, yeah, you'll, he'll get the information, process it very quickly, throw it at the back, continue reading the newspaper. You know, and I think we talked about that a little <laughs> bit earlier, about the difference, you know, I'm in my box. <laughs> You are not even respecting that box. So give me the time. time. If I'm concentrating on that box, let that box be exhausted first. You wow. see? Yeah. So effective communication requires, uh, like we said earlier, requires having a common language. And that common language comes from understanding one another, growth in that understanding of one another. And the interesting thing, is getting to know each other also depends on communication. Mm. So the more you communicate, the more you know each other. The more you know each other, the better should be your communication. And uh, we also used a number of things in <coughs> communication. John was in Australia while I was here in Uganda, and we did a lot of letter writing then. So um, that also is very helpful. Can I put my thoughts down and give them to him can I send an SMS? Even Can today. I send an email? Even today. Even you today. still write we still letters? Write. Well, I mean, these days it's more modern. Now it may be an email, it may be an SMS or WhatsApp message. But we got used to that mode of communication. Yeah. Mm, even now you still write letters. Especially oh, when, when we have gone through some hard patches and he's not understanding me mm. and I'm not understanding him. And we are coming together and we're just, you know, we are not, we, there's a lot of clashing. Mm. So you resort to, we call right. it a love letter. Yeah. So you begin with nice words about you are still important to me. I know I chose you. Mm. <laughs> I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere kind of thing. And then you put down what you, this is what are my thoughts about what happened, what we said, what you said, how you said it how it hurt me. So those moments of when it is really mm. painful mm. and you can't say it all because you are, you, you are bound to be interrupted yeah. by him trying to tell you that he didn't mean it or he didn't do solution. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, the problem is we often resort 
to verbal mm. as communication, almost always. We just resort to verbal. Now, the problem with the verbal, if you have an issue between the two of you, here is what will happen. I will say something. And before I complete whatever is in my heart, whatever is in my mind, she comes in. Mm. And that distracts me. So it's like we are speaking like this. You know? Mm, yeah. We are speaking like this. So you are not touching properly. Because not everything that is being said is being processed adequately mm. so that the person can give an answer that is meaningful for you. That's what happens with words. And that's why she's saying that at a time like that, for us what we'll do is just sit down, and write a letter, write a nice love letter, place it on her pillow somewhere or wherever I know she will not miss it. And when she sees it, you know what? She will not respond until she has read the whole letter. Mm. So in other words, I would have powered out everything. You know, that yeah. is in my heart. So the, I think the point is we need to learn that there are many modes of communication. communication. It's not just verbal. It's not just gesturing. Even silence communicates. Crying communicates. We already talked about dress. But even the color of the dress. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yes. About it. oh yes, it also communicates. Because when you find a dress that is uh, or a suit or whatever that's very bright, can you miss looking at it? No. And then you, within your head, you decide it is smart, too bright, to what? You see, it has communicated. Mm. <laughs> you can't run away from it. Even the way you look, mm. even the way you look, and everything then, communicates. Uh, it's also important to communicate things that are deep within that nobody sees. Mm. How do you feel? Mm. What did you dream? What do you envision in 10 years to come? Have you been able to talk about it with your husband, with mm. your wife? Because some, some of these things I might say, I want to be um, an important MP. 10 years down the road yeah. but your husband doesn't know that you want to get into politics and 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 it's important to think <coughs> together and dream together because mm -hmm. we've been so used as single people to think just between ourselves your head to your head your ear to your ear mm -hmm. but now you are going to think from one person to another and so <coughs> you verbalize some mm -hmm. of those things um, that you are feeling I'm feeling embarrassed, I'm feeling sad, mm. I'm feeling happy, mm. and then your dreams, I want to be. This mm. is what I envision myself to be in, in a few years. That's yeah. what I want. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Doctor, you see, like, there are some relationships that begin on, it, they, they communicate effectively, mm. they have these levels of communication, but eventually the relationships die and when. Why, why is it happening? Well, it's all to do with, uh, with, 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 with shutting down of, inform of, of communication. Right. Mm. And as we said, you, you know, when you get married, you've done everything, you are done. Yeah. So you start going uh, your I different think, ways. I think it is the trouble that many times we think that the way we communicated when we were dating before we married is unnecessary to marriage. Mm. You know? So when, I think it's when very they important. enter into the marriage day. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's one of the things. But the other is failure to grow in communication. Communication is, is a living organism, if you wish. Touch. You it's a living organism. kind of touch it. You know? Because you're also growing to know this person better. Mm -mm. So I may say that for me, my touch is always here. Or my touch is always a slap. But as I get to grow, uh, to grow in my knowledge of her, I realize that what she treasures most is very different, maybe a pat on the hand. So let us, let us understand that communication itself grows. The words that I started with and may have hurt her, teach me, don't say them again. Now find another way to communicate with her. So let us look at communication as something in which we grow not something that you stop. Mm. You know, many times we talk about this when people are dating, they are very good at taking each other out for a cup of tea. If they have money, they may go wherever and have a bigger meal and so on and so forth. And they go for these things. The moment the wife is at home, the husband is at home, it's like, I now have her, I now have him. 
what is the need for more? That Even the story is changed. Change is you dress <laughs> like you know you are in the village. Hey. You, you are not you're not washed. That is also <laughs> communication. Yes, I come home mm. from an office where I've seen very beautiful <coughs> girls, and I get home, and this woman is looking like a, a, you know someone who's coming out of a of a mad market marketplace. Mm. Then what or happens? Someone from in stricken. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So there are a lot yeah, of things yeah, that change yeah, that we need to yeah. take care of. Mm. That the way we look and the way we dress and the things we do mm -hmm. do not change to, to alienate us from each other. So how yeah. do we grow in how this communication? How because we everyone talked about growing in communication. Yeah, 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 the way yeah. you started when you're dating, mm, it doesn't yes. have to be like that. You have to grow. Let, let me let, let's go into the the, the, the five levels of communication, of communication because that that's the growth that mm. we want to see mm. in a person. The very first level, we call it the taxi talk. If you are entering a taxi or a lift, as we come up here to the Family Life TV, it's like you you look you, everyone who comes in just looks up to see where they are going. Mm -hmm. They don't talk to each other, or they might say hello. Someone asked us, where are you going? We said, the 13th floor. And that's it. No other conversation. Mm -hmm. Or if you sit on a border border, you just tell them, I'm going there, and they take you, and that's it. So in marriage, we begin with that first level. Mm -hmm. You know, we are comfortable yeah. in, in fact, with in this, saying hello. It's a good example, because as we were coming up today, one person greeted us. The others looked at us. They would enter and just look at us, and then look at the <laughs> or press whatever you know so th that is really the lift talk or the taxi talk so there's no about. intimacy here yeah and remember that as we are growing into communication we are growing into intimacy we are not going to deal with you like a border border man mm. or a taxi guy that is in the taxi so that's the first level it's just i am just an acquaintance I'm your friend, I'm, you know, I greet you in the morning. And here in Uganda, we, we love it because they tell us, greet this man every morning. In the night, say good night. When they come back, say welcome back. So there are some, those are just basics that you can even tell your house girl or your shamba boy or the, 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 the taxi man. Mm. Then we go to the second level. The second level is called the accident talk. Hey. If I see an accident mm. that has just happened, um, I will come and tell you that, you know, I saw this border border man, he fell off, then the car knocked him. I will tell you that. Mm. It's factual. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, those two levels mm. are very comfortable, but and they are not intimate. Yeah. And we need to understand that factual, truthful as it is, truthful as it is, has nothing to do with how I feel, has may not even change anything about my life. The two levels. The two I levels. saw it, yeah, I the saw the accident, level. now I'm telling you. But oh, in yeah. telling you, is there really... Now, we're not saying they're totally unnecessary, mm. but we are saying that those two levels do not build up the intimacy to the level we want. So if I go home and say, you know, I've been to Family TV, I met Brenda, I met Amy, I met these people here, I'm just giving facts. And he cannot dispute them because I saw and I'm telling. Yeah. So it's a safe space for many mm. people. Mm. And mo many couples stop growing there. On those two levels. On those two levels. Yeah, on those two levels. Because they are safe. They are safe. They are not going to threaten me. I greet you I'm in the morning. Yeah. I tell you about my work. I tell you I got some money. I didn't get yeah. some money. I met my friend. I'm going out. Yes. Uh, aren't there dangers of this? Because if if I'm seeing a relationship, yeah, that's where well, that's <laughs> there's why no I emotions, want to there is no effectiveness, yeah. Yeah. there is yeah. nothing. Yeah, yeah. There are some accidents have point. emotions. <laughs> well, the the emotions, but if they're accidents of yeah. other people, of other mm. people, not of, of other things that yeah. have happened, that does not impact our relationship. It does not go. It's not emotion. like we have shared it, mm -hmm. unless it is, of course the accident of our child, then we come together. But even then, you need to go beyond that. You know, an ac accident talk simply means you are living at the factual level where your hearts are not touching. 
So you need to go up. Mm. You're talking about levels of communication. What level are you? Are you having that taxi talk? Yes, are you having that border border talk? Or you're having that accident talk in your marriage? So how do you grow? on a daily basis in your marriage but we are proudly sponsored by protea hotel by mario tentebe for tight spa fitness center swimming pool dining and conference rooms wedding reception and other occasions kids play center golf all those things you're going to find them at protea hotel and uh, for any booking and reservation just give them a call on 041432 one three comfort and luxury at its best you will find it at protea hotel by mario tentebe and thank you for sponsoring us and thank you for loving such of uganda family tv mm. yes we are continuing we talked about at uh, the levels of communication and we talked about at uh, the taxi talk where you mm -hmm. find someone some of them will greet you and will be some of them will be like like how everyone's saying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some people you talk You'll to. You'll sit with someone they, they and they will not there. even, like, they will not even greet you. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll be like, yeah. where did this one yeah, go but from? I think it's important <laughs> to notice that from the taxi talk to the accident uh, talk, you are now talking about factual issues, mm. at least. Mm. But the taxi talk may just stop at greeting. May not even greet. May not even greet. The taxi. Mm, the taxi okay. level. Yeah. Mm. yeah. You, you, you know, when when you when you have just got married you can easily say welcome back honey oh, how are you eventually that might easily get lost mm. and the person walks in opens him for himself goes into the bathroom goes and finds his own food no talking if you're lucky so these levels if you're lucky the husband may just say oh you are back <laughs> only that oh you're back so let's talk about the three the three top the three remaining ones, mm. yes is what we call political talk. Okay. Now, when you, are, when you have a political talk, it's like each of you, let's mm. say the husband and wife, belong to a political party. Let's say like NRM, like NUP, like FDC. And each of these people have different opinions about the same thing. So it makes it a very, very um, uh, emotional time and a time where there, is a, there can be a lot of disagreements and a lot mm. of clashes. Why? Because we have our own opinions and we can stand up for them. Mm. Mm. Let me give an example. If we decide where are we going to go to church, and mm. I say I'm going to na na Namasuba Church of Uganda, and he says he's going to Watoto Church. Mm. So I say, I want to go to Namasuba, you want to go to Watoto, and these are my reasons, and those are his reasons. And they are very valid. Mm. So eventually we are not going to mix, because why? That's my opinion, and mm. I have it backed up like this. Yeah. Yeah. So many people, when they get to this level of political, they do not want to, 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 to have any, any problems. They want peace. Uh -huh. So what happens is they move back to level <laughs> two. Say, yeah. oh... He doesn't want to come to Watoto with me. Fine, I'm not going to discuss that anymore. I am just going to go by myself. So you start doing things secretly. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to contribute to my mother's house. Okay, I will be getting money and I will build my mother's house without his knowledge. So we go back to level two. So mm -hmm. level three is an important part yeah. of growing. In other words, what we are saying at the political level, you should be able to express your opinion. What if you clash? You do. Well, it's healthy. The clash is going it's to healthy. be good. Clashing is actually healthy. You didn't marry your clone. Mm. You married a person different from you. So and then so you, you have be to, ready to for clash. opinions. In fact, be ready for opinions that people are so convinced about. Now, you know, we just we went through elections. When was it? Was it last year? Yeah. Yeah. We went through those elections, but mm. you know the campaigning that happened at that time. And people were going there, they were shouting, they were what? And you start wondering, all these people who are shouting, what are they going to get out of it at the end of the elections? They are very opinionated at that point. But what are they getting out of it? It's important for them to express their opinion. Uh -huh. You know? Mm. So we're not saying you shouldn't express your opinion. But you need to understand it's not the growth, it's not the level of communication where one stops. 
Yeah, because when, when you bring out your opinion, so you bring out your opinion and the clash happens, the conflict happens. So you also have to learn how to deal with conflict mm -hmm. because the clashes are going to be there. Because you've come, you have your own way of doing things. He has his own way of doing things. It might even be simple things like how do we brush our teeth? Mm. When do we wake up? You know, do we use the same car when we are going? Do we use a taxi? Simple things like that. Mm. So learning to know that we are going to have conflict, but we have to learn how to resolve or yeah. how to work through them. Or, you know, it's a win-win situation. Yes. It's not a win-lose. Yes. yes. I think we need to understand that conflict is healthy. In a Many relationship. Times we look at it as, as negative. Something that is negative. But if it is conflict whereby she has an opinion, I have an opinion. It's giving us actually the opportunity to work through it. And in that working through it, we are growing. Mm. We can give you an example. When we were going to retire, we were not sure where we were going to live. I wanted to live in Munyonyo, he wanted to live in Mukono. And for quite a bit of time, for a few months, mm, yeah. you know, they would ask us, so when you retire, where are you going? And I would look at him and say, Munyonyo, and then he would say, Mukono. Now, that was two opinions, and we, you know, we had very good reasons, each one of us, mm -hmm. why we did not want to stay where, where he, 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 he was suggesting. Mukono, I had traveled, as I was telling you earlier, I was traveling from Mukono to Kampala for 20 years, for our journey every day, back yeah. and forth. And that, I wanted that to stop. I wanted to end that. And he, 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 he <laughs> there are many things around there that we had to talk about. So it gives us an opportunity to put our opinion on the table to be examined. Yeah, and then you are able to look at the pros and cons mm. and eventually resolve which is the best. Mm. And so we looked at this. In fact, even our children came in and uh, they, <laughs> they tended to weigh in on my side, but they came in and I think eventually. Uh, the truth is, when there is a situation like that, because you cannot live in Munyonyo and live in Mukono mm. at the same time, you know that you must arrive at a common position. Okay? There may be a few other things where you may go different ways and still you can still work together, mm. but something like that, at the bottom of it, we wanted this one goal. We had to be in the same house. And so yes. we don't have the pros and cons. <laughs> and so uh, we, don't want, <laughs> we don't want people to come out at the end saying, okay, go to Mukono. I'll, <laughs> I'll go, go to, to Mukono. No, no. <laughs> you know, there yes. must be a common. Yes. And, and sometimes yes. it may be that I may give up what my, uh -huh. my, my, my opinion to be able to deal with mm. the situation. So that is political. Mm. The political yeah. talk. And then the fourth but it also requires respect. One. Respect for each other's opinion. Mm. Okay, there must be respect. So don't think that the opinion that is being expressed is rubbish. True. No. It's and uh, actually, we are spending a little more time on this because this is where trouble starts. The political talk. The political mm -hmm. talk. Mm -hmm. Once people go up and they are having trouble politically, that's where they get. Down. Uh, that's where they get most challenges. Most in, challenges. In, in the marital yeah. And so people are so scared of clashing when they clash with their husband or they have a quarrel or the whole night they are not talking. Then they're like, "Oh, this is getting really bad." So mm -hmm. let me go back to the safe place. And once you go back to the safe place, you lose the intimacy, exactly. you lose the closeness, you lose the next ladder. Mm -hmm. of because the up. point is, with a safe place, what you have done. You have not, you have neither resolved nor managed your conflict. Mm. All you have done is to sink further down. It's just to cover it up. Now, the other thing is, when you sink further down, mm. what happens is the problem doesn't go away. I mean, the fact, if let us say, I forced her into Mukono, which is where I wanted, into Mukono. If I forced her, she would be there, but grudgingly. Yeah. Now, you cannot live through marriage that way. Everyone, we also have another challenge of, of, of the man saying that I am the man. I am mm. the leader. Well, so yeah. you will come where they decide, they well, decide well, that's for exactly you. What you can become a dictator. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. But we don't, take, we don't want it to go that way. Mm. Because this is, a, this is a union. This is like a, a, 
a place where both of us are important. It doesn't mean that he comes hard down, down hard with his arm and says, you must do what I say. If you don't do what I say, this is yeah. what's going to happen to yeah. you. That's why we say, lay the opinion down and we examine it. Yeah. And we pull out the pros, the, the positives and the negatives, and then make a decision. Mm. Yeah. Now yeah. that process yeah. for many people is slow and painful, and people don't want to go there. Uh, let me just say a couple of very quick things. So he says, I am a man. Mm. Didn't she know she was marrying a man? <laughs> so why do you emphasize it? It is actually a statement of your own insecurity. It's a statement of your, you know, your, if you keep on affirming to your wife or to anyone else, and you keep on affirming who you are, even if it's an office or something like that, you are actually saying, I'm insecure. So why should you, why should you be doing that? Mm, okay. Instead, the last time, by the way, and uh, this I don't need to say much because we have already summarized. Last time, that's why we talked about love. Husbands are supposed to love. Now, love does not impose and oppress. Okay, then we go to the fourth one. Uh, number four is sharing emotions. How you feel. Now, many people find this hard because they never express how they feel. They've never been allowed to do that even when they were young. If you are angry, the mother asks you, are you okay? And if you say, I'm angry, you get another beating. <laughs> <laughs> So you don't say anything like that. So being able to express to your husband exactly what you are, what is going on inside you. I'm angry with you. I am sad that you did this. I'm disappointed. I am hurt. All those things. That's a level mm. where you have got, which, which opens up a lot of intimacy. You are so close. You are able to see inside the other person. And you, you, you reach out and say, you look really sad. You look very angry. And say, yes, you affirm it. That's how I'm feeling. And this is what I need from you. Mm. Mm. That is the level of And you know the problem with uh, emotions. It's easier for women to express emotions mm. than it than is for us. men. Yes. Now, the other problem is, very often, the way you respond to the emotions of your wife or your husband may lead to either opening up more and therefore you grow in your emotional communication or it may lead to bottling up and then when you bottle up something you know how bombs are made yeah you put a lot of energy inside there and it's just waiting for the moment for that energy to, to come out and it and explode will it, will, yeah. it will explode so it's very very unhealthy to try and bottle up. You know, we, we do this to children, and we, you know, a child is crying uh, because you have punished don't them. Don't cry. You say, don't cry. Who told you to cry? <laughs> but I'm hurt. Yeah. I'm hurt. Even parents Allow go... me to mourn the beating. I remember, and even, even parents go to an extra mile to say their children, a man does not cry. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. does not cry. Now you see, that's Is totally that wrong? Un... That's wrong. Mm. That's wrong. If you have emotions with it, that's how we teach children to grow emotionally. And the same thing now when they enter marriage, they have put on grow. this hard face. Mm. Because they were told, never, a man never cries. Who said so? You know, don't you have emotions? And You're sometimes told. because we are emotional beings as women, the men are not able to see those emotions. So you need to verbalize them. Instead of hoping that he'll see my tears because I'm angry, when I bang the door he'll hear that I am angry, just express it. If, uh, just as we said before, if you need to write it down, write it down. Send an SMS and say, you know, this is how I feel today. I don't really want to talk about it, but I'm really angry with you. So being able to express that. If you bang the door, the, your husband may think the wind actually hit it. Mm. <laughs> Let yeah, me go so to the fifth the one because of time. <laughs> Um, it's called the gut level. Uh, the gut level. Now, when you say, when you talk about the gut, it's like when you drink water, you feel the water going all the way down into your stomach, mm. but you really can't see what's doing, what is doing inside there. So that is the inside, speaking from the heart, the deep things that you have never told anybody in your life.
yeah. that you are able to express. And one of the biggest one is attraction to maybe another person who is not your wife, mm. who is not your husband. So you get to work and you are attracted to this woman and so you come back to your wife and say, guess what? <laughs> There's someone who is taking over my mind. <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> you see? Who does that? That's the depth. Yeah. Yeah. Or you steal money, 20 million, 50 million, 100 million from your workplace, and you come back and say, guess what? Oh my I have God. stolen money. You're supposed to <laughs> make misunderstand you. Yeah. <laughs> so that's transparency where we are able to, to receive um, uh, help mm. in working through some of the difficult areas. So I might come and say, because you've stolen money, we better take it back because you've told me. Or because you are attracted to this other woman, we better do A, B, C, D. So I become helpful. And so that level takes me <coughs> to even higher depths of intimacy. Wow. Mm. Eh, I wish we had you for the next two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this has Thank been you. amazing. Thank this has you. been really amazing for all these four well, four weeks that we've had you. It has been amazing. And in case you've missed all these shows, just go on our social media platforms. But we cannot go minus a prayer, Reverend. You're going to give us a closing prayer. Mm. I think we shall stop at that. Okay. Loving and gracious Father, we thank you for this morning. We believe there are people out there that have been listening whose communication has broken down or is weak. It's our plea and our cry that you reach out to those who are hurting because communication in marriage is not good. And we thank you that you have given us the opportunity to explain a few things. We know there is a lot more that could be said. Therefore, we pray that Holy Spirit, you will continue to teach your people and to equip them that they will have relationships in which they are fulfilled because their communication is good. Be with us for the rest of the day. May you watch over marriages, may you watch over families to the glory and honor of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for all those ones that have been watching us and for those ones that have been following us and for those ones that love a word of life. We love you so, so much. And did you know that uh, having an open discussion in your marriage, it leads to fewer arguments, it leads to stronger relationship and it builds honesty and trust. Yes, just practice it and you're going to see results in your life. Thank you. And we are proudly sponsored by Protea Hotel by Marriott and Tebe for tight spa, um, outdoor swimming pool, dining and conference rooms, wedding and reception and other occasions, just go there and they'll be able to serve you comfort and luxury at its best. Thank you so much for loving us. We love you so much.